Is this your way of telling me that even if I go to Antarctica, I cannot escape spiders? What up, Ho Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again. Yes. I was unsure if we were gonna make it to this reaction today. Why? It's about the underwater, the deep sea. Oh. There's definitely orcas. Let's just rip the band-aid off. I, I got the pleasure of reading a couple comments of new subscribers to your channel. Okay. I would just like to reach out and let you guys know that her fear of the deep sea is very real. <laughs> it's so real. We fight off camera. Like obviously we wouldn't fight on camera. That would make for pretty good content. Yeah. It would make for actually really good content. Yeah. But it's just not the vibe. It would stress a lot of people out. <laughs> you know, we just decide not to do it. Right. But when Cavill Geographic does underwater videos, mm -hmm. we force her to do the reaction. Yeah. I guess forget this is like also a job. Like you don't just only do the part you like, you also do the part you don't like. Right. So it is rude to be like, oh man, she's playing it up, whatever. She's playing it down because the camera's on and we're willing to get <laughs> jump scared by deep sea creatures she's really afraid of. So respect that, really respect <laughs> that. I, I do my best. Yeah. It's so funny too, because like this, like we're doing this reaction and I literally just had a nightmare about orcas like three days yeah. ago. She dreams about orcas killing and eating people like it's normal. And it, I know it's a lot of information, I'm sorry, but they have to know. They don't. I no, wake up, no. she has an intro with that, the horror and despair, that's my gig, not hers. My brain doesn't like me very much, I guess. Yeah, and she comes up with these like bad descriptions, right? Yeah. My mom. Everyone dies in my dreams. You just have a cute exterior, man. It's fucked up in there. Yeah. I'll let you do the rest, but I just, I was very passionate about that today. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. But my husband coming to my defense. I know, I got like to. Like a gallant knight. knight. That's what I'm saying, Look man. At you. Thank you. That deserves a kiss on the face. I appreciate that. I'm well aware that it comes across like I'm doing the most in my reactions. Yeah, yeah. And I promise you, I'm even worse in person. Yeah, that's yeah, very true. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're like, oh, she's putting on for the camera. I'm like, you're right, but not in the way that you think. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> I'm super excited to see what this video has in store for us. If my eyes are closed during the reaction, mind your fucking right, business. Right, yeah. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> Without further ado, let's go no, ahead and get started. you like an angry one. Mind your fucking business. Also, just so you guys know, we're gonna split this video into two parts because it's kind of oh, long. Yeah. So the first part's gonna be on my channel mm. and the second part's gonna be on Chavez's channel. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. Let me say that I'd rather eat 10 pounds of Popeye's biscuits with no drink than ever go out into the ocean. Wait, 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 wait. You Like you say that, but have mm. you had the new strawberry biscuits? Yeah, it's so good. Cause bro. It's so good. Bro, bro. Fuck, a, fuck a diet, bro. We should get one. We like, we exactly if we split one, it's like not as bad. That, that's yeah. what I want to hear. Yeah. That's the kind of cope I need in my life. Well, I'd rather ride cross country on a bike with a hot grill for a seat than spend half a second in the deep sea. Facts, There's a though. lot of living nightmares and paralysis demons come to life if you sink deep enough. Yeah. And the Megalodon? is not one of them. No. You'll often hear Thanks. this thing about how the prehistoric apex predator never got discontinued. It's just chilling a step above hell in the abyss. Yeah. This is Cap for two, well actually three good reasons. Mm -hmm. One, there just isn't enough food to sustain a 60 foot f you to the natural order. That's what I was getting ready to say. Like, dude, you guys don't understand how much food it would have to eat. It is a gigantic muscle that cannot stop moving. Yeah. Not only would we have seen it, we have killed off so much fish. Yeah. Two, if nature did keep the same jumbo jaws that peaked in the Pliocene, we at least would have seen a body by now. Yeah, true. And number three, why do y'all want this to be alive so bad? I promise you there's way worse right. things down there. Like, I would evacuate my bowels if I ever saw a giga great white shark. Ew. But put me in front of a T-posing squid and I'm shitting more bricks than the entire city of Newark. The big fin squid is easily one of the most disturbing things alive as I'm saying yeah. this. Yeah. It's a T-posing predator with arms estimated to max out at Look just at under 30 feet. Look at that. Scientists believe the big fin catches bodies by dragging those arms, which can be easily 20 times its own body length, along the ocean floor like trawling nets and feeding on whatever poor soul accidentally bumps into them. You're gonna hear me say believe or we think a lot. And that's because we don't know. We don't know a whole lot about them. <laughs> I think you have the same fear that HP Love Races had. <laughs> you know, like his impending doom. Of, oh, I don't call him HP Lovecraft, by the way. Like, I'd have to remind people at all times. Love the lore, hate the man. But uh, yeah, like his impending doom. Yeah. That's gotta be what it is. Because he had a thing with the deep sea too, you know. He'd never even seen an orca, I'm pretty sure. 
And he hated that so. shit. Dolphins. He's definitely seen dolphins and yeah. stuff. And like fish guts at fish markets to give him like hor- like pa- panic attacks, you know? Mm-hmm. So he locked himself in his house for years and shit. Can I just say that you're comparing me to HP Love Races? Okay, thank Can you. Can we maybe wrap up this comparison to one of the most awful people in the world? The end. <laughs> <laughs> Every sighting and virtually every specimen studied were either juveniles or paralarvae. We have no way of knowing exactly what their <laughs> final form could look like. That's For all we know, this could be Junior and we just haven't seen Mama Big Finn oh yet. I would have thought that just putting elbows on a squid would instantly turn it into the spawn of Satan. <laughs> oh, and if you thought the Big Finn was just this oh! slow, passive floating predator, then you're seriously underestimating the ocean's ability to massacre your mental health. And if you're curious, this video was taken about 7,000 feet down in the Gulf wow. of Mexico. But considering they're believed to be the deepest living squids at about 20,000 feet, okay. I have a theory. This is a juvenile, and the big boys are the ones shacking it up down in the crotch of the ocean. Mm-hmm. Right. Good news, the big fin probably only feeds on small fish and crustaceans. Thank goodness. Bad news, there are squids big enough to beef with the biggest predators on the planet. And the biggest predator on the planet that isn't a disgraced former YouTuber is the sperm whale. <laughs> which on its own would have to be one of the most traumatizing things to witness during their two hour hunting yeah. expeditions down in the deep sea. Yeah. Well, the tankiest carnivore on earth regularly runs fades with the giant squid. Yep. And by giant, we're talking about calamari growing to an estimated 40 feet long. Yep. Not only are they themselves predators that hunt using 20 foot tentacles, they're opportunistic cannibals that would 100% murk their entire family reunion for some calories. Now, nature <laughs> high key screwed up their character design. They have a donut shaped brain and an esophagus running through it, meaning if they swallow something big enough, not not only do they run the risk of choking to a flat line, they can also factory reset their entire personality through severe brain damage, oh. which is why they mitigate this by shredding their victims with a oh, razor okay. well, and what is yeah. essentially a tongue with teeth, the radula. That beak is such a weapon that you'll rarely see a sperm whale that hasn't been tattooed during a struggle with a oh giant my squid. God. And while yeah. the plus size cephalopod usually loses in a war with the whale, they do not make it easy. Right. But the most disturbing thing about them is that eye. Giant squids have the most physically imposing <laughs> eye in nature. With it's being- just like, <laughs> sorry guys, it's just like looking at us. Like, you know, they're kind of smart too. Like it knows you're doing something around it and he's watching. Roughly the size of a soccer ball. Jesus. Contrary to popular belief, huge eyes don't exactly help it see further, but it does mean they're terrifyingly good at noticing objects giving off their own light. Okay. Which is a lifesaver since when their biggest optosperm whale is on the hunt, modern day Leviathan disturbs glowing creatures like jellyfish and crustaceans who flash in response. Right. Having eyes as big as our heads means the giant squid can detect and use those flashes to avoid becoming a course. Smart. But that also means that if you ever go swimming in the Giga Squid's area code, the flashes you'd create mean that while you might not see it, the same animal that does its own kind dirty would know exactly where you are. Oh, and Lord. honestly, there's only one thing that could be worse than getting stalked by a school bus sized head foot. Stop. There's another squid with hunting tactics so spiritually upsetting, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and use a lifeline. The Humboldt squid, also known as the Red Devil. I'm Lindsay, by the way. Hi. Humboldt squid are found in the eastern Pacific Ocean, typically between 600 to 2300 feet below the surface of the ocean. And their okay. nickname comes from the way they use their pigment cells called chromatophores to communicate. You're probably familiar with chromatophores through videos of different cephalopods using yeah. them to change right. colors, blending into their surroundings, and even dreaming. And Humboldt squid notably use them to turn bright red when they're aggravated, hence the nickname Red Devil. It's very on brand. They're also extremely predatory and have been known to act aggressively towards scuba divers on rare occasions, which <laughs> becomes a bit more terrifying when I tell you that they can get to eight feet long oh and 100 pounds. Now you might Lord. be thinking, Lindsay, that is not that big. What about the giant squid and the colossal squid that can both get to like 40 feet long? Right. Well, I haven't told you the best part yet. The Humboldt squid is known to live and hunt in groups of up to 10, no, up to 100, no, a thousand, yes. In groups of over a thousand. One thousand squid. That's about nine. First of all, eyebrows look amazing. Second of all, a thousand squid? That's too many squid. How did I not know that for so long? I've never heard this these facts in my life. I literally might have to double check that somewhere else. Not that I don't believe them, but I just have, I have literally never heard that. A thousand? That's too many. A thousand eight foot of anything is a lot of things. Lindsay, Lindsay. Casual Geographic already scares me enough. Okay, I didn't need Lindsay added to the equation with her friendliness and her bucket hat. A thousand. Damn. 
Yeah. All right. Let's go, man. Yeah, let's go. That's 992 many, if you ask me. <laughs> While hunting in these groups, they use their chromatophores to communicate with each other, coordinating movements and attacks, allowing them to take down larger prey, dragging them into the depths oh until they go God. unconscious. Oh. Scientists have identified some of these communication patterns, as you can see in this little chart, but still don't know exactly what any of them mean. But regardless, that Great. sounds like one of the worst ways to be unalived in the ocean. Oh, wait, True. this isn't a TikTok collaboration. That sounds like one of the worst ways to die in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> You, you want to practice our squid communication? What are you telling me? Yeah, she got a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know they got thoughts. I'm done. About thoughts. I'm done with you. All right, let's do it. All right. You can see, whether it's being confronted by a Humboldt That's block so party or many. squaring up with a so live hot. action Kraken, there are many aspects of the deep sea that end up with you putting your therapist up a tax bracket. And a lot of that's because of this cute little thing known as deep sea gigantism. The idea that the cold temperature, God, the dissolved insane. oxygen, and the lack of pressure from predators allow some animals to escalate to the biggest and most terrifying. Okay. Oh. Thank God. Okay. I was, I was gonna say, I was gonna ask I, if it okay. was fake, but I was terrified that the answer was gonna be no. I just thought it was photoshopped, and I was just really hoping we could confirm it later on. <laughs> you know, do a little YouTube. Yeah, you know, whatever. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exhibit A: The Japanese spider crab, yeah. which okay. can measure 12 feet across from claw to claw and I weigh think as much so as cool, a human. Yeah, that kind of Only thing worse than a giant spider crab is a giant crab spider. This is an Antarctic sea spider, a dinner plate sized demon spawn. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So sorry. Is this your way of telling me that even if I go to Antarctica, I cannot escape spiders? Bro, bro, water spiders, I thought were all small. I know a lot about spiders, man. I thought they was all tiny. I thought that was the whole point. Using little webs to make little air sacs to go in the water. Right. That's cool. The small ones. Dinner plate size spiders is too much, man. I like, don't get me wrong. We already know about Australia, right? And the spiders down there. Right. They're not supposed to go in the water. Yeah, those things don't count. Hunts by sucking the life out of its prey through its proboscis. Look, now, technically, they're not actual spiders. But also, I imagine most people watching technically don't give a f Especially I since know. this one looks like it identifies as a face. A then there's a giant isopod, which is essentially cool. an aquatic cockroach big enough to be cradled like a baby. No matter why you would, though. And if you're looking for that's kind of cool. For a truly supersized animal crossing, the oarfish should be on your list. Yeah. The giant oarfish can grow to well over 30 feet long, and there have <laughs> even been claims of those in the neighborhood of 50 feet. Proof that wow. back in the day when we had stories about sea monsters, they weren't lying. They right. just didn't have all the names yet. Right. Also, if you caught that pun earlier, oh. we're friends. Now. But with deep sea gigantism and the endless expanse of ocean acting as a canvas for Shaitan to practice his art, if you dive deep enough, there be monsters. For True. example, this. This isn't an animal. It's a group of animals joined together in something like a hive mind. It's a bunch of eels. So we're not talking about it. Yeah. We're talking about them. And so fauna force like this come in many forms. Like the Portuguese man of war on oh. venom to ensure that the excruciating experience of meeting one is permanently etched into your brain. I'm an idiot because my first thought was like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> <You'll> pet it. <laughs> <laughs> Touch it. And there's a Priodubia, a giant saphonophore that can flex a total length of up to 160 feet. I'm sorry. And even though it's a collective group of tiny animals, its length could humble a blue whale, making it technically Whoa. the longest creature on the planet. Okay. Or at best, a modest second, since the bootlace ribbon worm has been reported to reach 180 we have feet heard, we have in length. Heard of those, and yeah. it's toxic because the ocean, and of course it is, with <laughs> nasty smelling mucus potent enough to life deprive the crabs it likes to eat. Yep. Like I said, whether it's Lucifer's tapeworm or a flying spaghetti creature, Creature, there be monsters creature. and it gets so much worse than a giant worm because as terrifying as a deep sea is it's also nasty yeah. and there might not be anything more repulsive than the hagfish yeah this that's, loogie that's loogie loogie feeds on the before. rotted corpses and carcasses that sink down into its domain so and they're gross. slimy they're big slimy they're so gross. yeah they don't have any actual teeth the graveyard guppy feeds by sliding into an opening and eating the decomposing body from the inside out. Yeah, and you buddy. would think that something that eats like a casket wouldn't have to worry about getting put on a plate itself. Again, you're giving the ocean too much credit. As self-defense, the hagfish will sweat buckets of slime, a yep. phlegm jacket that's thick yep. enough to clog the gills of anything hungry enough and to I'll F around and too. unlucky enough to find out. To the point where this is the end game of a truck transporting hagfish <laughs> on the highway, crashing. Now you've definitely seen this picture before, but yep. have you ever stopped and asked yourself what they were doing there in the first no. place? Yes, actually.
actually, <laughs> yes. So I hope I'm about to get clarification. Okay. Because why? Why were you transporting hagfish? Where did you collect the hagfish? What was the reason? <laughs> I like to, I'm nosy, bro. I, I looked at that, I was like, I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. Remember how I said nothing that eats like a hagfish should ever have to worry about it's getting touching eaten? it. Well, simple. For these hagfish, <laughs> their final destination were dinner plates in Asian countries such as South Korea really? where they're considered a delicacy. Now, I'm not one to judge other cultures, but we seem to have a habit of constantly trying to eat all the things nature went out of its way to tell us not to. <laughs> one thing you can... <laughs> he saw those onions and that, that pepper and stuff. He's like, wait a minute. Wait a second. <laughs> won't see as a main course is something ironically named after a fruit. The sea cucumber is like sea the cucumber. in that its meal prep consists of all the things we'd normally flush, burn, or bury. Yeah. All the soul evacuated bodies that sink down to the ocean floor instantly get put on the cucumber's grocery list. It's a literal bottom feeder, and They're I mean so that cute, since they'll though. also make a meal out of feces. Yeah. But like with vultures, if Thanos had beef with sea cucumbers, the world would become an infinitely more disgusting place. <laughs> That's not the only way sea cucumbers contribute to society. They're also often used as a protective bunker for fish and, well, let's just say they break in through the back door. Oh yeah, wow. it's a violation of the highest natural law. Wow. It gets worse when a pearl fish decides to have a play date right next to its prostate. I don't even know if they have a prostate, but you get what I mean. And if that makes you uncomfortable, here's an ad to give you time to mentally prepare for what's next. I don't. <sighs> okay, so, you know, it's like he learned his power scaling from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> He's like, and then it gets worse. And then it gets worse. And then it gets worse. And he's right. Every time. It gets worse every time. Well, the good news for me. Yes. The worst part is going on your channel. <laughs> <laughs> the worst of the worst? Yes. Out yeah. of the, all of the worst of this worst, what's the worst is this is? Definitely yeah. the sea spider. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely like the sperm whale didn't even bother me, right? Like yeah, I was yeah. chilling. I honestly, I was prepared for whales in this. Of course. So like the fact that we didn't see that many is low key kind of suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he did say deep sea, so there might not right. be whales in deep sea Got it. thing. I know people out there are like real scared of snakes, right? They're like, ew, snakes are so scary, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. So the idea of sea snakes is probably really terrifying to them. So just take that feeling and transfer that to see that, spiders. That's very appropriate. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I like snakes. So I like, I feel like I would see a sea snake and be like, oh, that's cool. I should probably leave. It's probably poisonous. <laughs> but like, you know, I would think it was cool. If I saw a sea spider, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm out. I I'm like done. spiders. I like what they do in theory. And the fear I have with water is like when you swim, you create like little tornadoes of water. So yeah. you like pull it towards you and nah. you try to swim away. You know, and that thought is what terrifies me. Yeah. It's just like sucking onto me, like moving around. <laughs> then you can't remove it. Now we have a problem. You say my brain is full of horror. Are you good? Just as long as it stays like arm length away, I'm straight. But I'd be like fluttering. My I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to join us over on Chavez's channel. On the way. Husband, thank you for being here with me. It was almost a pleasure. Thank you for holding my hand and massaging my hand. It was so nice. You guys couldn't see that. Like, that was off screen. Yeah. He was massaging my hand because my hands hurt because I'm going to the gym. Yeah. Any who's ins, don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments muscles. below. For our muscles. Flex for them. And other, yeah. other than that, peace out, hope it's good. It's you can't fucking breathe oxygen, lit. piece of shit. <laughs> Three, two, one.